be four for each table, so you'll have to share. I'll give you one between you. Is that all right? Now these are and George will confirm because I worked with George for 14 years, 18 years as a teacher at Hornby School.
And you can't open another market, can you, in this area because of our market. In 1636, it was recorded that Romford had a sweet, savoury, clean and gameful market for hogs and all sorts of swine. And what else is needed to a man's life? Now, we still have the swine, but they're two legged <laughs> not four legged. So, happy that. Um, about 200 years after the market opened, um, that was in 1480, the Rockford people used to live in the old church area, and they had a chapel there. And then they decided to move up to the old, the old high street and live in cottages. And it was also about that time that the king gave permission for a new church to be built um, along the highway, because remember, through the marketplace, going right up to London and to Colchester, was the main Roman highway. So the church was built there, St Edward the Confessor, and that church is still there today, except, of course, it was rebuilt. Um, you all know about St Edward the Confessor. I haven't got time to go into his little story, but there's quite a story behind St Edward the Confessor. Um, to get to the church, there was a lot of waste ground, and that was where the butchers were with their meat, where they slaughtered and dressed the meat. Now, if you have a look at your picture I gave you, have a look in front of the church there, you will see the little wooden stalls. Now, that's the shambles where the meat, once it was built up a bit, I'm sorry it's a bit dark, but where it was built up a bit, then um, the shambles was all those stores still doing um, where the meat was all dressed. Now, if you have a look as well, you can see the church house, which is still there today. It was built in 1480, and it was lived in, first of all, by a priest. Um, serving the chantry established the manor of Gouches. And in 1613, it was bought by the um, Grafton family, who then turned it into a very successful inn called the Cock and Bell. And that was one of the main coaching inns where they changed horses for the first time coming out of London. It closed in 1900 and then became the church house. Now it's still there, and if you have a look at it, the sign is still hanging outside, which says it was built in 1480. So that's been there an awful long time. The present church was built um, in 1850. And from the remains of the old church, plus stone from John Nash's Quadrant Arcade in London. Now it is said that if you go to Old Church area, where the old chapel used to be, on St Andrew's Eve, if you kneel down and put your head close to the ground, you will hear the tolling of the old chapel bell. So if you've got nothing better to do on St Andrew's Eve, you know where you can go, can't you? The policeman will come along and go, what are you doing down there? <laughs> now, one thing that there was plenty of, pubs and inns. Now, a lady has written a book about um, pubs and inns. I did put it on there. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. You didn't know he gave it out, did they? Oh, there were some more things there to do with um, some pictures of the old shops. Ah, uh, oh, here it is, yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, if you care to look up all the pubs and inns, there is a new book being written by this lady which gives you pictures and told you all about all the pubs and the inns that we used to have in Romford Marketplace. Now, if you have a look at your picture again, you will look, see a swan on the left hand side, high up. Now that was the Swan Inn. And that was 
the most successful in stopping place for East End cyclists. Oh, there because you that road oh. calls go right through to Norwich, to Harwich, through to um, Colchester. So the East End cyclists would stay at the Swan Inn overnight. Now that's why you get Swan Walk, because Swan Walk is underneath where that Swan Inn used to be. <coughs> I did a reckon. I decided to start at the top and work my way down through the market to see how many of these pubs were actually left. And the first one you come across is the bull. Now I did actually go in there and probably thought, who's this old lady with a stick wandering in here? Um, I did ask all about it. It's all been refurbished in there, so that is one of the original pubs still there. Now if you have a look at your picture again, down by the church, you see the buildings go back a bit. Now there is the land. I didn't go in there, I didn't like the look of it. It's all painted a horrible dark green. It could have been all right inside, but I didn't take the chance. But that is an original pub. And then carrying on down there, you get to the Golden Lion on the corner. And then, just a bit further on, where Walrus is now, a name that we will soon disappear. By the way, um, I heard on the radio this morning that the Upminster and the Rockford Woolworths are ones that are going to close on the 27th, along with five other genetics. So you haven't got long to go in there. I wandered in there just now and I thought, God, this price has not come down, really. So that was it. So you'll be losing this one on the 27th. I went into um, the Bitter End, which is the name of the pub now. It used to be called the White Hart, and it was considered the best coaching inn um, in the past. I went in there, I didn't like the look of that one very much inside either. I think the Bulls and the Golden Lion are probably the best ones. So we've only got four left of all the dozens of pubs that there were in, uh, in Romford Market. Now, if you have a look at that picture again, look at the top and you'll see the old courthouse. Right at the top on the left hand side there's a tall building. Now that was the old courthouse. They didn't have a lock up in Rockford, so they used to send the prisoners to Chelmsford or Ilford. And there is a written record of a prisoner costing one pound two and sixpence to be sent from Rockford to Chelmsford to be put into prison. Now the road, remember there was still going through the marketplace, became a turnpike in 1721 by Act of Parliament. And it was after that in 1785 that the coaches began to arrive. Um, there used to be, in the 18th to 19th centuries, 40 to 50 horse-drawn coaches going through Romford every day. And you can imagine, uh, can't you, um, on the horse-drawn carriages, how bumpy it would have been. Um, I've got a picture here of one of the old carriages, the old coaches. You'll, you'll be able to pass it round, I think that's the best thing as long as I have it back again in a minute. Yeah. Um, this picture on the right hand side is a picture of one of the old original coaches. You can see it very small and it's outside the Cop and Bell Inn waiting to have the horses changed. Now if I pass that round, can you, do you reckon you can pass it round successfully? Go for a bit or I'll have one of you outside if you <laughs> The trouble is you can't do what I used to do. And I used to grab them by the tie and say, what did you say? But you can't do that kind of thing. Now, no, Kevin, you no, no, mustn't touch the little doll. Don't want to do Right, now if you have a look at that, and um, if we think in the 1800s of an imaginary journey to St Paul's Churchyard from the Cock and Bell. Now going all over Cobbled 
streets, wouldn't you? You could have four or six holes in those in the road. In that particular coach that you're passing round, there would have been 28 passengers. 16 on the top, at one shilling each, and 12 inside at one and sixpence each. Now the journey took two hours from the Cockham Bell, Rockford, to St Paul's Churchyard in London. Two hours. But and they had lots of stops to um, change horses. Now, if you were sitting on the top there and it was pouring heaven's ugly rain and you were being thrown all over the place, you'd probably be popping into the pubs and having a few quick drinks. So by the time you got to St Paul's Churchyard, you couldn't have cared less what was happening to you on top of the coach. So that's what a typical coach journey would have been. Now, this is where your group comes in, the road to people. In 1728, a charity shop, a charity school was opened. Now, just about where the bull is now. So, if you have a look at your picture, it's, it's going up towards, more towards the top of the uh, market. The rich people in the area decided to pay for the poorer children to have an education of a couple of hours a day. And the charity shop, um, Charity shops, charity school went on for quite a few years. Now, your people, the Rotarians, right, this is the actual building, this is the charity school as it was, and there are niches in it. You'll have to pass this round. Now, there are two niches in it, and in one was a girl and one was a boy. Now, the Rotarians wanted public libraries, county libraries for the benefit of everybody. And when the charity school was decided to be closed down, they stepped in and made sure that this building became the county library. And it was the county library then from 1939 to 1968 when it was demolished and of course the library was put where it is now. But they did not demolish the figures, thank goodness. Those figures are in St Edward's School. Oh, white coffee, please. Thank you. So it was good thinking on somebody's part because they knocked down so much in this area. It's a wonder they didn't knock that down as well. So those, if you went to St Edward's School, you might have remembered seeing those statues in there somewhere, wherever they are. So that was due to your people, the Rotarians, then in 1939 that we got the county library. If you want to pass that round, that was that was only recently that was printed. <coughs> so you've been doing good work for a long time. Now, Bon, I, I will just say I have been a bit coming to this rotor rotary people. I've been a bit thinking, oh God, I wonder how I'm going to go there, you know, all these business people, whatever. Well, when I walked through the door and I saw you were all a similar age to me, <laughs> 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 I thought, oh, what am I going to worry about? And you were all chatting away so merrily, I thought, right, well, by the time we get to me, they will have had plenty to drink. So <laughs> now, at the other end of the market stood um, what was um, John Lor jo uh, Laurie Hall, built by John Laurie in Scotland. Um, I hope you. Oh, I've got a picture here of it. This is, um, it was a courthouse, but never used as a courthouse. It became a mission hall, and also in 1939 it was made into a cinema. Now this is a picture of it here. Some of you who lived here then would remember that, that it was a cinema. And it was knocked down in 2006. And it is now the new hall there, and do you know what it's called now? 
No. No, no it's called Tollgate House. Because by the side of there, the top of the market was the Tollgate, which led right the way through to Colchester. Now, so that is now Tollgate House. Now, John Rowley was a very influential man. He had a lot of money. His uncle, who lived in Rockford, was the Lord Mayor of London. And he started to build what was to become Lorry Town. I think it was about where the Dolphin is, used to be, you know, over there. But he ran out of money, same old story, and so he had to stop building. Now those houses, the ones that were built, were there for quite a few years. I think they must have knocked those down when they started to build the Dolphin. And that's where you get Lorry Walk from. Um, behind Lorry Hall, in the 1800s, was a loan pond with a ducking stall, which was intended for airing wives. So if anybody had a wife that would, either she was doing the wrong thing or she wouldn't do what you wanted, they, you could take her there and she could be ducked. <laughs> Where was this was that a good idea? You could do with that now, could you? Um, also, any men or women who cause any misdemeanors, they could be uh, oh, well, ducked in the true. pond. You see, that's not fair, is it? No. When you get ducked in, it's not fair. Um, and that led to the ducking stall court that used to be behind Lorry Hall. Um, now, up to the 20th century, there were many small shops. And I've lost it again. Let me do some other bits. There's so many bits flying around. Now, I'm not going to be ducked in the pool, though. Right, here we are. How do you know? Oh, there we are. There's one of uh, two of the old shops you may remember seeing. Can you see that? Gertie's of Lancashire. Now, this is an old picture because the telephone numbers say Romford, not the numbers on. So there's two of the old shops that used to be. You can pass that round if you like. Um, Now, this name that you will remember, uh, where's my book by now? Is it, you've just got it to go going over there. there no? um, you remember Stones? Yeah. 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 Now, he built his first store in 1864, and then the next one in 1901. Now, those of you who've got the book, if you like to turn over, you'll see a yellow piece sticking out that says stones. You'll see the two shops that he had originally. And then they were demolished and he built the stones department store. Now that used to be a nice store, didn't it? Now in the 1920s, Mr. Stone, immaculately dressed, would stand inside the shop and he would greet all his customers. And then when the customers got more and more, he then employed Mr. Maddox. And he would be dressed in a frock coat, and he was the shop walker. And he would then do, um, direct all of the customers as to where they had to go. Just like it is today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they all get told where to go. Yeah, where to go. Yeah, where to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you do, Ken, yeah. Now, in 1945, Stones was burnt down. And we really remember that yeah. after a burglary. Yeah. But it was built up again, and then of course it was bought by Debenhams in 1960. And luckily, Debenhams is still there. I don't know how long for. Now, in 1984, they did do excavations in the market, and they uncovered an old watercourse, an old tannery, amongst other things, as well as that, they found lots of china, glass, and other bits and pieces from all over the world. 
Today the market may not be so noisy without the animals, but one thing we still have are pickpockets. So nothing changes, does it? Right. Now, to finish, we're going to take an imaginary walk. We're going to be Mr. John Brown arriving at the Market on Michaelmas Day. He's come to buy a new horse, amongst other things for the women of his family. And this is in the 18th century. The cattle and pigs and the animals are already tethered. And the poor cows are mooing dismally because their udders are full of milk. Because they mustn't be milked until somebody buys them. Because a full udder is the trademark of a good milking cow. Mm -hmm. Then once they're bought, then the milk is sold to or given to anybody who wants it. The fruit and vegetables are already there and the servants already standing there waiting to be hired. But he doesn't want any servants. Can you imagine him taking a nice little girl home? <laughs> now, at a shaving booth, a barber is complaining that it's taken him twice as long to shave his customers because they've all got long faces. <laughs> <laughs> They're all moaning about the weather, which has spoiled the hay, and also about the parson that's putting up their tides. Now, what changes? They were all moaning about this year, weren't they, about the rain? Yeah, yeah. All on the court, mm -hmm. and the rents all going up. So that was the 18th century, we're the 21st century, and nothing has changed. Um, at Mr. Brady's shop, Mr. Thompson, the surgeon dentist, is claiming to fix artificial teeth upon the most improved principles. <laughs> From a single tooth to a whole set, without taking out any of your other teeth. Now, ooh, can you imagine? On top of all the teeth you've got, without causing you any pain. And they're impossible to distinguish from the real ones. <laughs> At the Dolphin Inn, Dr. Rees from London will cure you of liver or any inward complaints. The headquarters of the A and B companies of the 1st Volunteer Battalion of the Essex Regiment is in a fine townhouse at the back of the market. Now that is where the um, shopping hall is at the back there. Now the sergeant is greedily eyeing all the men drinking because very craftily he's getting, wanting to get some of these drinkers persuading someone to take the king's shilling when they're so drunk they won't know what they're doing. So that's how they got them in the army. Now Joe decides to go into St Edward's Church to look at the records of baptisms and burials. Baptism 1610, Josiah Savage, son of a woman in prison. 1768, Edward Shambles, named for the place where he was discovered. So fancy leaving a baby amongst all that horrible meat. Mm. Burials, 1628, Toby Asser, killed in a chimney pot. Mm -hmm. He passes the cock and bell, where the hostlers are bringing out the horses, uh, where a coach is just coming down the road, heralded by a post horn. And he continues on his way to the King's Arms to listen to a patterer who earns his living by travelling from London to Birmingham, telling stories. Because remember, nobody could read then, could they? Ordinary people like us wouldn't have been able to read. So he was very popular. People could listen to his stories. Mr. Brown must not forget the ribbons, laces and trinkets he promised the ladies of his family. And on his way, he resists the temptation to bid for the wife of Thomas Newcomb. <laughs> Married only one month and brought by a rope to market to the auction. Oh. Now what had that poor girl done or not done in a month? He didn't have much time to find out about it, did he? One month. 
The highest bidder gets her for five and sixpence. Plus... Six bob. Is it sure that we have a manager there? Yeah, he cares all right. Plus... Plus, gentlemen, sixpence for the rope. <laughs> so with the sun setting, John jogs weary along his way, leading his new horse, with his saddlebags full, to where his family waits to hear all the news of the market. Thank you.